to Ring the Bell. My name is Joey. I'm your dad, Rod Dimmy God. And joining me as always is... Wow! We've got a lot to talk about because AEW and NXT both gave us a lot of stuff this week. So let's go ahead and jump right on into the NXT review. First things we got to see out of the women this week was a one-on-one -on -one contest. It was Aaliyah going up against Zia Lee with a very intoxicated Robert Stone at ringside. So I feel like Robert Stone stole the show and I'm happy about it because he is glorious. He is glorious. Mr. Bobby Roode better look the fuck out because he's coming for his gimmick. So basically, it was a very short, sweet, and simple match. Zia Lee and Aaliyah were just doing kind of trade-off holds. And then drunken Robert Stone, who Aaliyah carried to ringside because he was just plopped up against the Tron, Hops up on the ring apron and then just pukes into the ring, causing the distraction so that Aaliyah can roll up Zia Lee. I guess this shows us that Aaliyah did sign with the Robert Stone brand when before, previously, it was kind of left open-ended. So this is exciting because last review, we were very afraid that Robert Stone might just disappear with no clients. So this gives him something to buy into. Yeah, and it actually seems like she really wants to be represented by him. And it's the first time I've seen Aaliyah pick up a win in... A long time. I can't even remember the last time. The only thing that got me a little bit was when she rolled up Zia Lee. Zia Lee kicked out. Like, she literally kicked out at two, and the ref was like, no, 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 shoulder's not down. And she had to re-kind of position her weight to pin Zia. And I was Zia like, kicked out. Zaya wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to. Yeah, so that was a little bit wonky, but everything else, it was a very quick match. Like, definitely probably less than five minutes. We had a couple of those this week. We did. This one, though, was pure storyline. I'm so excited for Robert Stone to have Aaliyah, but where is Chelsea Green? What happened to her? Rumor has it she's being pulled to main roster. Although, I'm going to start to petition that we come up with a different word than main roster because action we're being served from NXT is main roster worthy. And so, most of the time, better than main one roster. Yeah, so we need to tell us Twitterverse what we should be calling it, aside from main roster. But I hear that Chelsea Green is being pulled to other brands. Okay. I mean, leave the Robert Stone brand to go to the SmackDown or Raw brand. I guess that's how it works. The next dose of women's action that we got was in a backstage promo. It was Candice LeRae coming to confront Keith Lee about what he said about Johnny Gargano which led to a tiny little backstage brawl between Mia Yim and Candice LeRae. Nothing really to write home to about this. It just seems like this feud's gonna extend a little bit longer. The most memorable thing about that backstage battle is a random bin of three recyclable water bottles being thrown. I'm just like, oh, we just have random trash in like Rubbermaid bins. Like this wasn't staged at all. If this could have happened before the Robert Stone um, Aaliyah spot, Oh my God. Match, whatever you want to call it. Like, remember, Rhea Ripley threw Robert Stone into a trash can last week. So if they were able to tip over a trash can during that and Robert Stone just falls out. Um, but after that promo, we got treated to yet another women's match. It was Caden Carter going one-on-one -on -one with Dakota Kai with Raquel Gonzalez looking like straight fire on the outside while Casey Cantanzaro didn't really make an impact that she was there. Yeah. Uh, as always, I love Raquel Rock Gonzalez. Like, that's the end of the, my review for this match. <laughs> I mean, but you can go on. Did you notice they cut Caden's little intro thing where she had the lights that go on her hair? That didn't happen this week. Um, but the big trunk controversy from this match was Dakota got the win by using the submission finisher that Naomi had previously been using, and Diva Stands erupted on Twitter and caused a big thing because Dakota stole Naomi's move. Uh, I don't really buy that. What do you think? And you brought up a really good point that, like, it's ridiculous to say anything in wrestling is stolen because everything is everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some people that put their own spin or new little things onto an already, like, set of moves. You know what I mean? Stealing? I don't think so. If Naomi had a problem with it, I feel like we would have heard from her on Twitter. Like, people are just making up a story 
because they're so bored because they're still sitting at home doing nothing. <laughs> I agree with that. But like, I understand the idea of like, oh, this person did this move before, but like Kevin Owens couldn't use the Stone Cold Stunner if that was a thing. You couldn't have um, Eve Torres that was using the Moonsault because that's Lita's thing. Carmella couldn't do the Stratosphere all the time. Moves are moves. New week, next week, it'll be a brand new Twitter controversy, but this match saw Dakota Kai get the win with the submission. One notable thing to come out of this match was Casey Cantaro trying to take out Raquel Gonzalez, and Raquel was just like, nope, just kind of threw her nope. away. I love her. She's like swatting the little bee, you know? I want her in a title picture so bad. And listen, I don't even want her in a tag title. I feel like she could hold a title by herself. Like, she doesn't need mm -hmm. this tag stuff going on. Yeah, I can't wait to see what comes on next. Um, to quote Miss Molly Smart, Molly Spartan, I would like to call Raquel Gonzalez the beast and Dakota Kai the wee mouthy one. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Molly Spartan. <laughs> so um, after that match, we got treated to a few more backstage promos. We got to see Scarlett and Carrie and Cross looking at the broken hourglass, which we got to see last week, which is, I guess, time is up. Did you notice? Once she did this with the sand, like one might conjure or something. Ooh. His foot was there. Just saying. I can't wait to see what happens. I mean, maybe he's a metamorphosis thing. I mean, I'm rocking my American werewolf in London shirt for a reason. So let's see what happens. But the next promo that we got to see was the one that got me real excited because Mercedes Martinez is coming back. Like she's still pulling the I'm the rough and tough 19 year veteran card, which I mean, she shouldn't really pull any anything else to be honest like she just needs to come in and whoop some ass because she's more yeah than i don't think there's anyone on the nxt roster i mean in the female division at least who can lay claim to that so yes there is Ooh. raquel gonzalez <gasps> really you know mercedes i don't think is as tall as raquel but like she has muscle and that would be very interesting to see very, because she's the 19 year plus veteran and then Raquel's, you know, home. I think she's pretty much homegrown in the PC, like maybe with some before prior training. So it's really old old school meets new school. And this is going to be a fun one if that happens. Yes. We got to talk about the match because it was the main event. It was the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships being defended by Sasha Banks and Karen, I mean, Bailey. And they took on Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox in probably one of the more defining moments of Shotzi Blackheart's career. Oh, agreed. The only thing that I felt bad for in this match was just Tegan Knox because this was the Shotzi show. The stuff that Shotzi pulled out in this match, it left Tegan in the dust. And I feel like we bash Tegan a lot. I mean, not bash, but we don't really have much positives to say about her because she seems just kind of stuck in the water week in and week out even though she's on television, which doesn't make much sense to me. Listen, I say this all the time. Some people are just B players. And right now she's B roll. She's a B player. Like she's put in a lot of situations where she gets a lot of television time, but that's because she can kind of put anyone over. She sells well. She just doesn't have the it for us right now. Like she doesn't, there, she doesn't light a fire inside of us to make us want to connect with her. Yeah, like that Ashley Massaro fire. Come on, old school theme song reference. <laughs> In this match, Sasha Banks selling that German from Shotzi Blackheart. Uh -huh. Like, good God. She ragdolled like nobody before her. Shotzi Blackheart, I'm officially bringing this slang back just for her. Give the bitch a belt. Because good yes. lord. Yes. Shotzi's a superstar. So she would make the belt exciting because she's almost unhinged in a face way. I'm a strong proponent of if you're gonna come out there and you're gonna be, you know, prove yourself as a number one contender, you're a number one contender. Like if you get the crowd on your side, kaboom, you're good. One unfortunate thing is I think she's only ever got to wrestle in front of a crowd like once or twice. I know. <laughs> But she's killing it now. Um, unfortunately, she did get kind of screwed over by Banks and Bailey. But at the end of the night, they both got what's coming to them because Io Shirai came out and cleared house with those two. Yeah, and she looked uh, a baller, like holding her belt up and like. Bruh. I mean, because she can play. Io Shirai is one of the best of all time. So it's kind of like you know, come at me, bro. Listen. If they set up a match between Ia Shirai and Bailey Dose Belts and they don't give Io Shirai the win, <laughs> I will riot. Only if Bailey screws her. That's the only way I'll accept a Bailey win. I see.
still won't accept it. I will be angry. <laughs> NXT gave us a lot this week. A lot of little segments, but a lot of fun little segments. Let's go ahead and jump over to some explosions because it's time for dynamite. Our first dose of women's action came in the opening tag team match because we got a little bit more of the teasing that we got on Dark, which we'll talk about in a bit, between Allie and Brandy Rhodes. I'm kind of really excited for this storyline, even though I can kind of predict where it's headed. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Brandy's getting better. I'm going to say that right off the bat. So again, maybe someone needed the critique. For Brandy, they just needed to let her be Brandy. Like, let her be Cody Rhodes's or, you know, the family member of the Rhodes family and kind of play up that way. Like, putting her with the Nightmare Collective was the biggest jumble they could have done with her. That, and then we also set up a little um, fun thing that carried on throughout the entire night of Britt Baker sending notes to Tony Giovanni, which was one of my favorite things ever. Yes. <laughs> um, but that was fun. But our first, like, act, well, actually, not even first women's action. It was our only women's action of the night came within a match that was Anna Jay competing against the brand new signee of Abaddon, which I, I think she's a lot of fun. But to get to Abaddon, we had to get through an Anna J promo where she basically said, I'm Anna J and I'm from Georgia. That was pretty much it. Anna J, she's new. She's like 22. I'll cut her some slack. But the match between Abaddon was insanely short. If the Nightmare Collective started with Abaddon, I think it would still be around and it would be what they intended it to be, like a force to be reckoned with of female talent with Luther thrown in. When you think of Nightmare Collective, She's although, nightmare. <laughs> yeah, no, I felt so bad how we were just like talking about Anna J because she's like, I'm the star of the show. And then gets shown up like a hundred times hardcore to the max by Abaddon. Mm -hmm. um, I get why they used Anna J. She's probably got the least experience on the roster. And this was, there's no other word for it. This was a squash. They put her in a weird situation for her doing this promo saying she's the star of the show. She wants to put on a show. She wants to show a lot of character. And then bam, the person that is the star of the show who puts on a show and shows tons of character is not her. So, But does that lead to something else? Because at the end of the match, we saw the Dark Order come out and carry her to the back. So maybe she's going to get a little bit of different character spin going here. Anna J needs to do a magic trick or something because her and Prince was like, Mm -hmm. And then here comes Abaddon. Just crawling with the special effects. She's great. I can't wait to see more of her. And then, like, Ms. Paloma Star pointed out, Abaddon in, like, shoot life is... <sighs> Gorgeous. <laughs> That's a testament to makeup skills. Like, legit. Yeah. Um, overall, uh, short little match. Spike Ron is a cool finish, but... I'm more excited to talk about the second thing that we got on AEW, which was Big Swole kidnapping Britt Baker. She was on Dark, but I'm just happy to see Swole again. Oh, I love her attitude. I love everything about her. The note that she handed to Tony Giovanni during the Abaddon match, which says this broad needs to find Jesus, was... <laughs> yes. This this emoji again. Mm -hmm. That's Britt Baker. But the segment where Swole kidnapped her, and then when Reba found her in the dumpster. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> I can't even put into words how much I enjoy Britt Baker. I also really enjoyed, uh, I get, do we call her Rebel or Reba? I'm gonna call her Reba. I liked when she was like, you know what, you're fired, you can go. She's like, I'm free? And then just turns and walks. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, no, 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 you're rehired, you're rehired. I don't think we can say this enough. I was not feeling Brit as a face. She is wonderful as a heel. I think I said last week that I kind of don't want her to get stale, so I wish they would leave her off TV. And then this week, they went and proved me wrong again. So, and Hikaru Shida, during that promo, we learned that Hikaru Shida will be defending the AEW Women's Championship at Fighter Fest against Penelope Ford with Kip Sabian in the corner. Um. And I have to say, doesn't this completely throw out the entire, like, ranking rule? I feel like those ranking rules need to be thrown out anyway. It's not mad it. I'm not going to be mad about it. Not mad about it at all. Um, I look forward to seeing Penelope Ford and Hikaru Shida at Fighter Fest because these two have pretty much led the division along with Statlander and Nyla for the past 
what was it, a month and a half probably now. So it's going to, I think it's going to be a great match. Well, let's go ahead and move over to um, AEW Dark because we also got... What's oh. AEW Dark? Because we haven't freaking reviewed it in so long. Well, this week they were like, you know what? Let's give them some stuff because we got three different women's wrestling matches. Well, let's jump into these matches because the first, we got Swole. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Swole. 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 Versus Danny Jordan, who was actually being a mean girl this week. Um, I always say, like, I think people see our reviews. Probably not. But whatever we've said previously about Danny Jordan, sh it feels like she, someone else must have said it. Because it feels like she was everything we wanted, except for when I said I wanted her to be more blonde. Um, but the match saw Big Swole get the win after Dirty Dancing, um, which was expected. Um, short little match, but I want to move on to the tag team match that we got, which was, um, I can't remember the last time we saw Brandy Rhodes in the ring, but it was her teaming up with Allie to face, um, Red Velvet, who I know from the Florida indie scene, so good for you, girl, and Kenzie Page. This match was a lot of fun, um, it was just kind of very standard, like, newbie kind of wrestling, which is to be expected with you know, two girls who seem relatively new in Red Velvet and Kenzie Page mixed with Brandy Rhodes, who is very new. Because yeah. Allie went down for the injury. We got to see Brandy pick up the win. I mean, Brandy, well, she literally picked up the win. Allie tagged herself in and then stole the victory for herself. And the tension there, I was like, okay, I like the story. And let me tell you, this is the match that I was like, wow, Brandy's getting a lot better. Like, I don't think she's just in the ring practicing moves. She's not 100% perfect, but she's <laughs> getting better. She's putting the work in. And I think if she keeps doing what she's doing, <clears throat> she may reach the level she wants to be and she may reach the level that they needed for nightmare collective you know what i mean she she may yeah. get there and i i think if she continues on the track she's on she's gonna get there pretty quickly i don't want her to bring back nightmare collective no but... you're right she can be a star because her facials and the emotion that she gave off looking at Allie at the end i was like oh homegirl wants to yeah. rip her apart yeah. And, and she I'm so for that. More confident this time. Yeah. And probably, you know, you probably get to practice this match a little bit too, so. Oh, true. Yeah. Let's go ahead to the final match, which was Penelope Ford with Kip Sabian taking on Skylar Moore. And this match I thought was a little forgetful and a little slow, but there was a puppy. Yeah. So again, with like the Abaddon and Anna J, there's no other real word for this but a squash. Like if they used Skylar Moore because she's one of the newer girls on the roster and they don't and like they don't want to make Penelope Ford look bad, so they're gonna make, you know, one of the new girls look bad, whatever, they're paying their dues. But I don't even know how to ask this. How long do we know how long Penelope Ford's been doing this? Because even some of the stuff she was doing was kind of oddly timed and not solid. So it wasn't just Skylar Moore. Penelope Ford's been going long enough that she's one of those wrestlers that I believe can put on a stellar match with someone else who can also put on a stellar match. Because the only time I see Penelope Ford that I'm not really impressed by her is when she's the one who had to carry the match. So she's not quite at ring general status, is what you're yeah. saying. I feel you, because I would say I'm there too. Like, when people are like, you gotta be the ring general, I'm like, Ugh. like, Ugh, that's a little oh. bit of pressure. Yeah, Taz pointed out something on commentary with this match that I really enjoyed. He was like, Penelope Ford work doesn't work at a certain worker pace. She works at Penelope Ford's pace. Like, she really does set pacing for every single one of her matches. She picked up the win, which was completely expected, but there was a puppy <laughs> and sucker for Hi. it. Uh, hey, Moxie. Hey, Joey. What was your boom-blast <laughs> moment <laughs> of the week? So my boom-blast moment is totally going to that suplex that Shotzi delivered on Sasha, and Sasha sold it because I just, I jumped out of my seat. It was just such good selling on Sasha's part. My boom blast is the return of Abaddon. Listen, this is the kind of wrestling I freaking love. Like, I've always told you, like, The Undertaker and his gimmick, like, duh. And, like, if you guys had time to, like, listen to my whole origin story, Moxie Molly, like, it is so in depth. Like this is what I love about wrestling: is telling a story, having a character, having a gimmick. And boy, has she got it! Yes, yeah, she does. Hey, Moxie. 
Hey, Joey. Where can people find you? Find you. You can find me at Joey underscore Mayberry across almost every social media platform. Also, check out my YouTube channel and my weekly show, Tops and Bottoms. Quick shout out. You can also check me on two of our really good friends podcast. You can check me out on Golden Era this week as well as Rest Friends. You can find me across all social media platforms at the, that's T-H-E-E, Moxie Molly. I don't have a lot of anything really new and exciting like Joey, but my friends and my husband and I have started this sketch comedy group. So there's that. Tweet me that. if you want to hear about it. Um, also, don't forget we have our Teespring where you can get lots of cool stuff. Don't forget we have a Patreon where you could like support us. And if you're not gonna do any of that, that, the least you could do is literally ring the bell so you can get updates on all of our newest content, keep doing this. interviews, reviews, and more. But guys, we will be back here next week to cover all of the NXT AEW hot goss. And until next week, guys, we love you. Stay safe. Bye-bye.